Mineral Identification Lab. Why do we need to know how to identify minerals? One of the key skills of any geologist is mineral identification. Since rocks are made up of combinations of minerals, knowing the mineral types helps to identify the rock and its origins. Knowing mineral types is important for many other reasons. For example, knowing the mineral composition of rocks helps geologists identify the stability of rock. A large structure, like a power dam built on soft rock, like gypsum or halite, might be prone to shifting. Knowing mineral types also helps identify rocks that might host mineral deposits of commercial value. For example, a geologist would have a hard time convincing a mining company to explore for gold in the limestone of southern Ontario, but might have better luck convincing a mining company if the host rock contains the mineral chalcopyrite. Identifying mineral types can also be fun. More than one amateur prospector has discovered a commercial grade ore body in Canada. Using a knowledge of mineral types to hunt for gems is like a treasure hunt. In this lab, you will learn how to perform some of the tests used by geologists to hunt for ore bodies. Before you begin this lab, you should download the following. A guide to mineral identification. A mineral identification chart, which will help you to identify different minerals. An observations chart. One of the first observations that a geologist uses to identify minerals is the color. Unfortunately, this observation is also one of the least reliable. Some minerals can vary greatly in color. However, when it is difficult to identify minerals, color is another tool used to verify a mineral type. When observing the mineral, be sure to consider only the faces that are freshly broken. Do not consider surfaces that may be discolored by biological activity or soil contamination. Observe the mineral sample shown. What color is the mineral shown? Click on the correct color to record your answer in the observations table. Luster. The luster is the appearance of the mineral surface in reflected light. There are two basic ways to categorize minerals based upon their luster, metallic, looks like a metal, or non-metallic. Non-metallic luster is further categorized as dull or earthy, pearly, vitreous or glassy, like broken glass, greasy, pearly, silky, resinous or adamantine, diamond-like. All of these terms are in your guide to mineral identification. What is the luster of the mineral shown? Hardness. Hardness is a measure of a mineral's ability to scratch or resist scratching. Measuring hardness is performed by comparing a mineral to Mohs scale. A simplified version of Mohs scale is shown here. You will use the scale, also found in the Guide to Mineral Identification, to determine the hardness of the mineral samples. To begin, drag your fingernail over the mineral sample. If your fingernail scratches the sample, the hardness on most scale is 2. Now, try dragging the penny over the sample. If the penny scratches it, the hardness is 3. Drag the mineral over top of the penny. If the mineral scratches the penny, the hardness is 4. Scratch the surface of the mineral with the nail. If the mineral is scratched, the hardness is 5. When performing this test, be sure to keep in mind that a penny or nail will always scratch a mineral that is softer on the most scale. Therefore, hardness is always determined by the lowest positive test result. Click on the mineral's hardness on the most scale to record your results. Streak test. A streak test is the color of a mineral when it is rubbed against a streak plate. A streak plate is simply a piece of unglazed porcelain tile. Rub the mineral over the white streak plate. 
If no color is observed, the streak is white. Select the color of the streak to record your results. Acid and Magnetic Tests The acid test is a simple test to determine if carbonates are present in the mineral. In much the same way that vinegar, an acid, reacts with baking soda, a carbonate, and fizzes, a strong solution of hydrochloric acid, will react with the carbonate in the rock and fizz as it releases carbon dioxide. Take the eyedropper and place a few drops of acid on the sample. If no carbonate is present, there will not be a reaction. Is carbonate present in this? Click on the answer to record your results. Some minerals are magnetic. Hold the magnet close to the sample and see if it is magnetic. If the mineral is magnetic, it will stick to the magnet. Is this mineral magnetic? Click on the answer to record your results. Specific gravity. The final test that you will do on your mineral samples is a specific gravity test. Specific gravity is a numerically equivalent to density. The density of a sample is determined by dividing the mass of the sample by its volume. Determine the mass of the mineral by dragging the mineral onto the balance. Record the mass of the mineral in the box below. Record the mass of the mineral in the box below. An overflow can is used to measure the volume of an irregularly shaped object. The volume of water displaced by the mineral sample after it is added to a full overflow can is the same as the volume of the mineral sample itself. Position the graduated cylinder under the overflow can to measure the volume of water displaced by the mineral sample. Add the rock to the overflow can carefully so that there is no splashing of water. The meniscus is the curved shape that the water surface in the graduated cylinder has. Be sure to measure the volume of the water in the graduated cylinder from the bottom of the meniscus. Record the volume of the mineral in the box. Now, use a calculator to calculate the density of the mineral and record it in the box. You calculated the density of the mineral to be 3.2 grams per milliliter. Therefore, the specific gravity of the mineral is 3.2. What is the mystery mineral? You have now collected enough information to identify the mineral you have been testing. Fracture and cleavage information has been provided in your observations table due to the difficulty of determining this information from a photograph. Use the mineral identification chart that you downloaded at the start of this activity to help you identify the mystery element. Do not guess. You need to know how to identify samples in the next section of this activity. When you think you have the answer, click on the name of the correct mineral. If you have selected the wrong mineral, you will have to wait 15 seconds before you can select a mineral again. Please make sure you use the identification chart to identify the mineral.
Choose a mineral sample. To begin the mineral identification lab, click on a number to choose a mineral. Color and luster. Observe the color and luster of the sample and record your observations in your observations chart. Refer to the guide to mineral identification that you downloaded at the beginning of this activity for help in describing the luster. Hardness. Before you test for hardness, refer to the Mohs hardness scale found on page 7 of your guide. Rub the penny on the sample and observe the results. Now rub your sample on the penny and observe the results. Scratch your sample with the nail. Now rub the sample over the steel plate. Now rub the sample over the glass. Streak, acid, and magnetic tests. Rub the mineral sample against the streak plate and record your... Now place four drops of acid on the sample. Record your results. Bring the magnet close to the sample and record your results. Specific gravity. The specific gravity is numerically... Now carefully place the mineral in the overflow can and measure the volume of the... Dis Calculate the density of your sample and record it in the observations table. Once you have identified the minerals in your observations chart, complete the following questions. What are the three most useful tests for the identification of calcite? What is the most useful test for quartz? Name two different varieties of mica. How can you distinguish between the two? What test was most useful in determining the name of a mineral? Explain. What test was least useful in determining the name of a mineral? Explain. Name two different varieties of feldspar. How can you distinguish between the two? How can the feel of gypsum and talc be used to distinguish between them? What two features could be used to distinguish halite and calcite. Congratulations upon completing the mineral identification activity.